Imagine a machine built to defend against the most feared threats of the Cold War. A towering figure on the battlefield, equipped with powerful cannons capable of ripping through the sky to stop incoming enemies. Today we delve into the fascinating world of the Jeopard Flakpanzer, a machine that not only defended nations but shaped military technology. In this video, you'll learn why the Jeopard was a game changer, why armies around the world once relied on its power, and why its legacy still echoes across battlefields today. If you're a fan of military history or simply curious about how technology can change the course of history, stay tuned, you're about to discover secrets behind this incredible machine. The Jeopard Flakpanzer, which translates to Cheetah Armored Vehicle, was born from a need for protection against aerial threats. During the Cold War, low-flying aircraft and helicopters posed a constant danger to ground forces. The Jeopard was created to address this need and became an icon of anti-aircraft defense. The Jeopard was built upon the same chassis as the Leopard 1 main battle tank, MBT, a powerful and reliable foundation. This meant it had the toughness and stability of a main battle tank, with the agility required to move across varied terrain. The Leopard 1 chassis offered mobility, resilience, and the ability to carry substantial weight, perfect for a weapon that needed to track and engage fast-moving airborne targets. To ensure it could counter these threats, the Jeopard was equipped with two 35mm Erlikon GDF automatic cannons. These cannons were powerful enough to take down low-flying aircraft and helicopters with ease. Imagine a plane flying low to the ground, preparing to strike, only to be met with the rapid-fire response of the Jeopard. This machine could unleash an impressive 550 rounds per minute, creating a deadly barrier that any aircraft would think twice about crossing. One of the Jeopard's most unique features was its combination of ammunition. Each gun had both anti-aircraft and anti-tank rounds, which made it versatile on the battlefield. This setup allowed it to respond to a wide range of threats, whether from the air or from armored ground vehicles. To operate effectively, the Jeopard required a highly trained crew of three, a driver, commander, and gunner. Each member had specific roles, and teamwork was essential. The driver ensured the vehicle could move swiftly across any terrain, the commander managed tactics and targeting, while the gunner controlled the powerful cannons and fired when necessary. What made the Jeopard particularly impressive was its advanced fire control and radar systems. These systems gave it the ability to detect and track targets before they even got close. The tracking radar located potential threats, while the fire control system ensured that every shot was accurate. This precision was essential, especially when dealing with fast-moving aircraft. Let's imagine a scenario. A group of helicopters is detected by the radar. As they approach, the Jeopard systems calculate their speed, altitude, and distance. In seconds, the machine locks on, and the twin cannons begin their rapid-fire sequence, filling the air with rounds designed to bring down these threats before they reach their target. At 52.5 tons, the Jeopard was a massive and imposing vehicle. It spanned 25 feet in length, 12 feet in width, and reached nearly 11 feet in height. Its sheer size alone made it an intimidating presence on the battlefield. This weight was balanced by a powerful 830-horsepower MTU engine that could push the Jeopard to speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. Though the Jeopard's primary purpose was anti-aircraft, it was well-equipped to handle ground threats too. Its steel armor provided protection against small arms fire and shrapnel. This made it more than capable of defending itself in hostile environments. The Jeopard's layout was both functional and strategic. The driver sat at the front right of the vehicle, allowing maximum visibility and control over the vehicle's movements. The commander and gunner operated from the turret, overseeing the targeting and firing of the twin cannons. Its turret was designed for 360-degree movement, which meant it could quickly switch between multiple targets in different directions. This was crucial in dynamic combat situations, where threats could come from any angle. As a self-propelled vehicle, the Jeopard did not rely on any external power sources for its tracking and targeting systems. A secondary power unit on board was dedicated to running the radar and fire control systems. This independence made it possible for the Jeopard to remain effective even when stationed away from main bases. The Jeopard was also equipped with smoke grenade launchers, a defensive measure that allowed it to create a smoke screen and obscure itself from enemy view. This added another layer of security for the crew, giving them time to reposition if needed. After years of service, the German military decided to retire the Jeopard. By 2010, its role was gradually taken over by more modern systems built on wheeled platforms like the GTK Boxer. However, the Jeopard's legacy continues as nations such as Brazil, Jordan, 
and Romania still operate the system, recognizing its effectiveness in the field. Over 500 Jeopard vehicles were produced, a testament to its importance and effectiveness. Its innovative design set a new standard for mobile anti-aircraft defense and influenced the development of subsequent anti-aircraft systems. In many ways, the Jeopard was more than just a vehicle, it was a powerful symbol of Cold War-era ingenuity and military strategy. By integrating mobility, firepower and precision, it offered a glimpse into the future of warfare technology.